Thank you for being here. We're excited to announce our 2016 uh, signing class on National Signing Day. Um, we were really pleased with the talent that we're bringing into the, onto our team. Uh, we, we got a lot bigger, uh, stronger, and, and also uh, got lengthy. And so we're, we're also got some speed involved with our team. Um, really thankful for the, uh, the people that contributed to, the, to this day, uh, bringing these young men into program. Uh, thankful for the uh, BYU football team. Uh, they are the uh, they are the the highlight of our official visits, and they're the reasons why a lot of these young men decided to come here. Uh, thankful for them, uh, the example that they've shown to these uh, recruits on their visits. Also thankful to the uh, BYU community, uh, all those involved in in the recruiting process, uh, faculty and staff, especially the students, the rowdy rowdy rock, and what they represent for our our, our student athletes and our our prospects as they come through on their official visits. Uh, very uh, thankful for the coaches that we have on our coaching staff and our support staff and the hard work that they put into um, in getting these young men and, and, and the, the, just the hard work in recruiting. Um, thankful to their families for allowing their their uh, husbands and, and, uh, and, and fathers to go out and recruit and uh, spend a lot of time, especially in the short time that we had to put together this class, being away from home, scrambling around all over different parts of the country and uh, being home, uh, being being gone from home quite a bit. So very thankful to their families and the sacrifice that they, they made. Uh, we're really pleased with the talent that we have. We're really pleased with, with everything that we have in store as far as uh, what we have for our team this fall. Looking forward to spring ball and getting back to football. Recruiting will continue. It's an everyday process. Uh, we look to um, add some, some more recruits as they come back from their, from their missions uh, that we're going to add to this, to this team this fall. We're also uh, looking at a few more to, to add to this class, and obviously we're looking for the future as well. So recruiting is an everyday deal, 365 days a year, but we're excited about the process of getting these young men on our football team officially. Thank you. And we'll, we'll open it up for questions now. Kalani, one of the things you were able to do for with this particular class was able to keep a lot of the guys who had previously committed before you were able to put this staff together. What does that say about the program and the job that your staff did to be able to keep those guys committed to come to BYU? Well, I think it's a, a, the um, their commitment to the school is, speaks a lot about their character, who they are, and then a lot of these guys committed uh, way before we even came along, and uh, being able to rely on on our players. Uh, on the team that to, to have those relationships with them and then also um, the coaches that that we have on staff at, at the time and during the recruiting process I think did a great job um, at getting those guys recommitted but for the most part it's it's a, a huge compliment to those those young men and, and the character that they have sticking with their commitment Ty this is your first experience as a college recruiter was the process kind of what you expected or were some things that surprised you what was your experience like out there uh, you know the experience was great. You know, I, I think uh, I think I was probably a little surprised at how welcoming families are to have you in their home. You know, that was the fun part, getting to meet the families and younger siblings, and and uh, then getting to know people on a personal level. So I really enjoyed that part of it, and and uh, the travels. You know, one thing you didn't expect uh, to be flying from North Carolina to California to, to Hawaii all uh, in a matter of a couple of weeks. So um, that part of it was different, but uh, I really enjoyed the process of it. Kalani, this is uh, Casey Robbins with Scout.com. Um, maybe for those who don't know, can you talk a little bit about what happens on official visits? And uh, it seems like in the past, a lot of snowmobiling. Um, are there any changes or anything you expect to bring in for official visits? No, I think the, the main part is is um, allowing the um, young men, and some of them are, are accompanied with their families, you know, with their, with their parents and um, some siblings, but just having them get the BYU exper experience as far as getting to meet uh, faculty and staff and people that are involved with the ed education process here. And then also the, the most important part is highlighting is highlighted by them meeting our players and the hosts and meeting the team and feeling like they can be part of that family, seeing themselves here, not just in the 12 games that they have, uh, you know, that are guaranteed uh, on the on schedule, but more importantly, the other the other uh, you know 353 days that they have to spend here. Um, and I think that's that's the best part of what we did as a vi on our visits. I don't think it's anything special as far as the type of foods because everybody eats everything. I mean, that's just part of the 
the recruit just eat a lot and obviously we are examples of too many recruiting visits so we're excited to start shedding the pounds but yeah it's it's just more just the relationships that's what we try to highlight here and i i am surrounded by great men on this coaching staff and they're the best part of the recruiting process for me to to allow these guys to get to know the the, the players and their the recruits and just see them mingle with them it's it's unbelievable so i think that's the process that we i try to do as a head coach trying to highlight those guys and get them involved with our coaches and see them in their element kalani since you took over the job how difficult has it been to juggle the roster and identify how many scholarships you have available and just the the nature of managing a byu roster i think that's just part of the deal i mean that uh, regardless of w whether you're a head coach or coordinator or assistant you're constantly looking at the numbers and looking at the depth and uh, you know working that with the re with the um the mission program you know it's unique for what we have to do here at BYU but uh it's just not me alone I do it with like I said a lot of good men that I get to work with and we go through the numbers and talk about different people and then and, and we we have the the honor of recruiting really good people you know whether they choose us or not I think that they come from good families and they're going to have great careers as they go through college football. John Kuhn, Utah Valley 360. Uh, Coach, looking at the class you brought in today, what do you feel like will be the defining characteristic of this class, you know, two, three, four years down the road? Uh, probably by the contribution that they put on the field and, and, and um, you know, with the uh, growth that we think we're going to see from some of these guys. Uh, a lot of these guys are uh, a good number of them are going on missions, and so, you know, when they come home from their missions, maybe the right ones will bulk up and the right ones will lose a little bit of weight. I don't know. Maybe they'll all get taller. So that's that'd be good too. But yeah, it's 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 a it's a difficult process knowing that it's not an exact science. But the the more good teammates you can bring along, it's not about one guy. Then one guy is not going to switch the whole th the whole momentum of what we're doing here. We have good talented men on the team already. You know they're going to add to it, and their, and their role as a as a teammate is more valuable than anything else. And so overall, you just have to gauge on on how how these guys come together as a team and and what they can do on the field together. Kalani Patrick Kinahan, twelve eighty the Zone Sports Network. I was wondering, you got in there late as far as recruiting. How much of it was a challenge to try to maybe get some guys that weren't committed in such a short time? Well, I mean, that's it, it was a challenge. Obviously, you, you have to do it with uh, that, with trying to hire staff and, and, and get everything organized and a support staff. Uh, that was difficult, but, um, you know, we're, we're asking a lot of the coaches to, to wear many hats as far as uh, get going and working. And, and I have great guys that just work nonstop. And, and it was a, it was a um, not a, a long process, but it was like a, a sprint for you know six weeks for some of these guys especially these guys on this table that are here with me they were in it for the long haul and they were they they performed really well as far as getting out there and grinding out as far as you know recruiting and trying to get an establish an identity on offense defense and special teams and then you know helping out in the, in the hiring process all that stuff was difficult but it, we enjoyed every second of it i mean i can speak for for these guys just it's football and it's it's at a place that we love and it was enjoyable so yeah I think it'll be a lot more fun having a, a, a whole year to go through and get another class, but uh, we enjoyed every part of it, and, and it was a, it was a cool experience, you know. But we, we're going to recruit the guys that we we think are going to fit this program, and we're going to we're going to swing with all of them and and see who we land. Jared Lloyd, Daily Herald. This is for all four of you. Six weeks isn't very much, but as you think back, I'm sure there's been a ton of experiences, but. For each of you, is there one that uh, is a favorite or something that stands out uh, from this this last six weeks of, of recruiting that you guys have been been going through? They can talk. I've been talking the whole time, so I was told I was just going to be a prop, so I'm supposed <laughs> to be here and look good and <laughs> just, just the, the for me is the families, you know, but being able to meet all the families of the kids, regardless of where they where they went, you know, I think. You think about uh, all the kids involved in the process and the and the um, all these kids that are getting opportunities to go get an education. You know, whether it's here, whether it's somewhere else, it's just it's really cool to connect with people. I think for me, that's been the coolest thing is to um, you know is to meet all these different families. And I mean, you know, all the kids that are here now. I mean, you kidding me? You're getting a, you know an education here at BYU. That's that's awesome. I'd cut my left arm off to have an opportunity like that. 
You know, I wouldn't cut off my right one because I still play fa flag football. But uh, <laughs> no, that just the families and the connections, I think, are for me, were, were all the coolest things. Sharper, 1320K fan. Uh, this question is for Coach E. Um, you've added some talented players in the defensive front. I know you mentioned earlier this month that, uh, you know, for 10 years this program has been recruiting for a 3 4. Do you feel that with some of these additions you might be able to uh, transition to a 4 3 def deep, four three defense a little bit quicker than you expected? Yeah, you know, it depends on, uh, you know, th uh, three of the, the D linemen that we signed, three of the five are going on missions first and so it, it, it's still a process and and uh, like I you know said before a month and a half ago it's just about trying to put the kids in the in the right situation making sure that they can do what we're asking them to do um, and so I think eventually we'll 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 get to where we want to be with that and just to add on that we coach lamb and coach coach Tuyaki, they know how to run you know a, a three four a four three it doesn't really matter that the best 11 will play and then we'll build a scheme around that. And we have coaches that, are, that are, you know, have experience in all, all those schemes. Kurt Cragthorpe, Salt Lake Tribune. Kalani, you've recruited for 15 years in this business, but this was the first time as a head coach. How is that different? And also, what did you find challenging about recruiting for BYU for the first time? Um, I didn't find much challenge as far as recruiting for BYU because I think it just it felt right. You know, I believed in it and I did it. You know, so um, being in the home and and talking about it and, and telling about my experience, I think it was just natural for me. Um, it's just like talking to a friend or or family member. It was just easy. You know, it, um, the the, the uh, you know, and I forgot the second part of head coach. as a head coach. I don't know. I, I, I just went it through and just. It just was weird for me to be able to say, yeah, well, I'm the boss. You're offered, you know, like as far as Jackson Kafusi, that's how it was. You know, I didn't have to call anybody to get permission. I just said, yeah, you got to you got to offer. That was nice being able to just, you know, work it out. And and uh, and, that, and, that, and you know, in and, and all these as far as um, offering guys, it's just nice to communicate with E and even in, in, in all our guys that we talk about, we're all on the same page. So we we understand and we know what we want as far as players. And it was just an easy transition. The best part of the whole recruiting process as a head coach was seeing how awesome these, these uh, assistants were at it and how great these guys are at, at recruiting. Uh, it was natural for, for Ty to go into a home and, and recruit. Just, I mean, all those years of home teaching paid off, you know, being able to go into home, take your shoes off and talk and hang out. And it was just natural for all these guys, for Ed and all the coaches that we have. It was, it was, a good, it was good for me to see that as a head coach. It was, it was a wonderful experience. Are we this supposed to ask before we <laughs> offer someone? Is that how it works? Well, if, 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 they can, if they can win a Heisman tie, yeah. You, you don't have to ask. No, but that was also easy. We, we, we couldn't bring the Heisman trophy around, but that would have been really nice. But no, just the experience of these guys being, you know, who they are. And, and uh, I mean, our whole coaching staff and our support staff are great people. And, and um, you know, selling it to, to the guys, we didn't have to do a – do it other than just talk and and um, and the connections that everybody has here to, to BYU, uh, it just it just goes worldwide and the recruits see that and you know and I think they want to be part of something that's special, uh, especially run by these great guys. You know, I mean we have we have a great university, great fans, great students. It's awesome. So it just helps out having great men run the program. Jay Catch from 1280 The Zone. Coach Sataki, I guess this is also for Coach Tuiaki. You seem to have a more of a renewed emphasis on Ca Southern California this recruiting period. Keanu Sali, Apaga, some of the other players you got out of there. Is that going to be a recruiting hotbed for you guys going forward? This isn't fair because Ed hasn't answered anything yet. <laughs> Ed can answer that question. He's been spent a lot of time down yeah. Southern Cal. I, I, I just, you know, for, for me and for, for us coming in, it's a new staff. Um, it's really just about finding the right guys and the right fit. And I've heard uh, another program use the word uh, OKG or the or the um, the words the letters OKG, uh, which means our kind of guys. For us, it's just finding the right fit, <clears throat> finding the right guys. And I think that it just happened to be that there was a, a big pocket of OKGs for us here at BYU down down in Southern Cal. And so we'll we'll continue to just go out and try to find the right guys. Ed, back to you. <laughs> This is a question for Ed. Um, KC was, was scout.com. One of the, the first guys that you offered, it seemed like when you came in, was Chris Wilcox, a kid who didn't seem to have a lot of offers, no one really knew about. Can you talk about 
him and, and what you saw in him and, and why you guys offered him so quick? Sure. Yeah, we had identified Chris at, actually when I was at Southern Utah. We offered him there. And uh, I felt like that he was an NFL prospect. I don't want to put undue pressure on the guy, but he had, he had the tools. We have a certain checklist that we look for in terms of developability. And I think his, his, his best days are far out in front of him. And he fit that checklist. We went after him hard there. Um, we don't worry. Fortunately, we don't worry here about how many recruiting stars a guy has. And I don't know, I don't know how many he has. Maybe he has zero or four. I don't know. But um, at any rate, you know, we just discussed immediately that checklist of qualities, attitude, character, effort, speed, height. He has them all, and so we extended the offer. And just to add on that, um, Ed, Ed, as a head coach of Southern Utah, developed some really great players. And this year there's going to be a lot of good young men from that school having an opportunity to play in the NFL because of what Ed did as, a de as developing their talent. And, uh, and getting them ready for that stage. And so that's a huge compliment to Ed, and, and I, I trust him in, in his evaluation as far as talent goes and him being able to develop. Him and, and Coach Guilford are going to do a great job with, with our defensive backfield. Dave Noriega with KSL. Uh, this is for Coach Detmer. Um, you guys had a lot of big names, uh, five-star recruits on campus, kind of some big swings and, and maybe some big misses. Can you just go over the emotions of uh, waiting for that letter to come, and then when when it doesn't come, what's it like? You know, I, I mean, I think uh, when you're recruiting guys, you, you know, you get to know them, and you get to develop that personal relationship with guys. And so, you know, there's some guys that, you know, decide to go somewhere else, and that's okay. You know, um, we still think a lot of those kids and uh, and wish them the best of luck wherever they are because you do de develop that relationship with them and so uh, yeah you're disappointed if you don't get one of those guys because uh, you have that relationship but at the same time you wish them well and and uh, know that the guys that are here the guys that choose to come here or you know everything happens for a reason and uh, and so you know we're excited with our class and the guys that are here but um, you know as far as the emotions go you kind of have an idea going in you know there may be one or two question marks on the board, uh, you know, come come this morning. But uh, I think for the most part, we, we had a pretty good idea going into the day who was coming and who wasn't. And, and we're excited for the guys that are here and and uh, wish those guys that aren't the best of luck. Uh, Dick Harmon, Deseret News. Um, Coach Detmer, it seems like this is a, a pretty big defensive class for this particular year. And but you, you've you've uh, had some quarterbacks that have agreed to walk on. Could you talk about each of them and what you saw in them? Um, and then Jaron Hall, who is a scholarship player going on a mission. And then yeah. the tight ends. Could you, could you mention a little bit about the tight ends that you uh, have recruited? And Josh Weeks, I believe, is going to switch over. Could you address that? Yeah, so I guess first of all, our quarterback situation. Uh, Jaron, you know, we're excited with him. I've worked with him at camps the last few years and uh, know Jaron well. And uh, the character he has, the leadership ability, not only the the athleticism, I think will will go a long way with Jaron. And so we're extremely excited. He's he's decided to join us and and uh, going to be a part of it. You know, he'll go on a mission for two years, so we'll have to wait uh, a couple years to get him back and get him going again. But uh, um, you know, we're, we're excited for that process to, to start right now. And, uh, you know, as far as uh, a couple of the walk-on guys, you know, we, uh, we've we talked with Hayden Livingston from Rigby, Idaho, and, and uh, he's a very athletic kid. We can't talk about the walk on specifically. Oh, so. Sorry. <laughs> I'm still learning. So Ty's, Ty's in trouble for that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, uh, he, we passed will. The, he passed the recruiting test, guys. So <laughs> yeah. trust us on that one. That's right. So, yeah, we can't speak about the um, about walk on specifically. Only the guys that, that signed with us. Dick, Ty's always messing with us. So I, <laughs> yeah. I appreciate that. We're glad it happened to him. question. <laughs> yeah. Spot on. Oops. <laughs> Glad Nate Burke's here to <laughs> bring me in. Uh, so, yeah, our tight end situation, you know, we uh, we obviously want to have tight ends involved. And so Hank Tui Pelotu is a, a guy that we're excited about having. You know, I played with Peter all five years and, and uh, 
you know, thank a lot of his family, and, and Hank's a great kid that, you know, really uh, can do a lot of things for us in that position. So, um, you know, we're, we're excited with him and, and uh, excited to get that spot going. And Josh, obviously, is going to move over to that that position. And I think he's a, a long, tall body that, you know, he, he carries his weight pretty well. But we'd like, you know, I told him I'd like to see him gain a few pounds here and, and uh, get ready to block some people on the edge, too. So he's excited with that opportunity. And and we've got some other guys that'll that'll jump in there and are excited for for their opportunity as well this spring. No more questions for Ty. <laughs> yeah, I'm cut off. <laughs> you did that okay, all that, that means I get it. That means I'll fire another one at you, okay. um, Jared Lloyd from the Herald again. Um, the the how how big of a uh, importance is it to be able to get the top most high profile LDS recruits to at least consider BYU and, and hopefully get them to come to BYU mm -hmm. because a lot of those guys recently have, have decided to go to other other places well that's going to be our, our first um, you know our target is going to be focused on the uh, LDS athlete first and uh, regardless of where they're at we're going to try to find them and, and recruit them and uh, do our best at get, convincing them that BYU is the place for them to be. Um, they shouldn't feel obligated just because they're LDS to come to BYU. And we should do our job as recruiters and as coaches to make them feel wanted and, and welcomed at our school. But, you know, there's, there's a bunch of really good LDS athletes out there, so we're not going to sign them all. We can only have a certain amount. And so I'm just I'm, I'm excited that there's a bunch of guys that are out there that are representing the church the right way and, and, and are out there in college football not just in football but sports all along there's a lot of good L lds athletes men and women that are out there representing our faith the right way you know and, and um you know we hope hopefully we can convince a, a good number of them to be here at byu uh dick harvin desert news <laughs> uh, coach tuyaki uh, could you talk a little bit about two players that may they're not going on missions right away um but handsome and then uh, uh troy uh, warner and why you recruited them, what you like in them, and where you see maybe they contribute if, uh, if at all this next year. Yeah, you know, Troy, I'll, I'll let Ed talk about Troy, but Handsome uh, was, was a kid that we recruited at other places, and he ended up uh, having a really, really good connection with, with uh, Galani. Um, and I think a lot of the kids that we ended up being in um, late, kids that made decisions late, were because of the, their relationships with Galani, as well as the, the rest of the staff. Um, but uh, you know, Handsome is a return missionary. He's here. We're we're planning on um, using him to, to stuff up the middle. He's a really, really big kid, uh, great kid, and he's been a, a great ambassador for the program as far as just uh, you know kids coming on campus and him, um, you know, speaking for as you know as well as as far as uh, sharing about the coaching staff and just his experience and why he came. He's been really, really good that way. Um, you know, we've been able to see Troy a little bit and workouts and all that stuff, just kind of on and off the road. And um, I know Ed, uh, let Ed talk a little bit about Troy. Uh, Troy, on his own merits, recruiting and, and being a top guy for us, there's no question about it. But I don't think that I can discuss him without putting it in the context of his brother. Any time when we all came on campus at one time and became players, who we choose to identify with and emulate is such a huge part of our future success. And obviously, he has his brothers, that, that role model, and his brother's such a, a strong character, high effort, uh, achieve in every part of life, and a big leader for us. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm really excited about his future that way. In the short time that we've been able to observe him directly, uh, morning training with, in the weight room and uh, and in the uh, pre indoor practice facility with his agility and speed training. He's got excellent footwork, technique. He's a grinder. The, uh, the strength coaches put the guys through um, just a uh, basically see who's going to quit and fall down drill on, um, was that Monday? Monday morning? Yesterday morning. <laughs> yeah. Tuesday morning. <laughs> yeah. On Tuesday morning. And, and uh, he, he really grinded through that with a lot of effort and, and – uh, High, high effort, high character kid, excellent footwork and ability, speed. All 
right, this one's for Coach Detmer, but I'm going to ask you about guys that you guys actually signed. I wanted to find out about offensive line. You guys, when you first showed up, you had no currently committed offensive linemen. You collected three in this class. Can you talk about those guys? Yeah, you know, our, our linemen, we actually have four in this class. And, uh, you know, they were guys that all came on to us late. And, you know, I think when you're evaluating those guys, uh, a lot of those guys will develop their senior year. You know, they they kind of, you know, look a little gangly as juniors. And all of a sudden you watch that senior year film uh, that they have put together. And, and it's like, man, these, these are the types of guys we like. They're all, you know, long guys that – have the frame that you're looking for, and uh, they play nasty. You know, I mean, they get after it. They pancake guys and jump on top of them. And so, you know, we're looking for guys that play with that effort and finish blocks. And uh, all of these guys play that way, you know. So we're extremely excited to be able to to find them late and to be able to offer those guys uh, late in the process like we did. But they're guys that we know after they come off their mission, they're going to be ready to go, you know, and they're going to have those extra two years to, to develop a little bit. And obviously they'll have to get back and get back in football shape. But they're all four of those guys we're excited about because, you know, we didn't have them on the board originally. They'd been evaluated, you know, somewhat, but uh, had no no offers from us at the time. And and they were they're all BYU guys. They wanted to be here and and uh, we really liked what they brought to the table after watching that senior year film. Coach uh, Sataki, this, this question's about uh, Tavita Ofehenue, his role in recruiting and being the director of recruiting operations. And is there, when you took this job, was there, did you emphasize that there needed to be a commitment in terms of numbers of staff that are focused on recruiting? Yeah, I think recruiting is the lifeblood of college football. So um, having the guys that, that have the connections and that have been, I mean, T.O. has been, uh, T.O., we call him T.O., so just get used to it. But Tibito Fangawe has been the guy that has always been there for young men as far as helping them transition from high school to college and, and at all levels. And so um, seeing him and, and, and the years that I've been as a coach, seeing what he's done for young men as far as, you know, his working with, with the different foundations and, and what he does for camps and things like that, helping those guys get to different places and, and not just all big-time schools. He's helping guys get to JCs and trying to educate them. Um, he cares about young men and, and their future and and what they you know furthering their education so he would be perfect being director of, of recruiting operations and what we were asking for our recruiting coordinator to do so and and, and if you know anything about him he's you know he's got a, a million dollar smile too <laughs> that's not a joke serious uh, this question is for Ty um, my name is Reno from the coconut wireless Somebody take that mic from him before we Let throw our shoes at you right now. <laughs> See if you yeah. uh, have any quarterbacks that are walking on this no year. No comment. <laughs> Good. <laughs> See, we, we, we also will role play <laughs> opportunities where we messed up and get better at it. So, good answer, Ty. <laughs> <laughs> Darnell Dixon with the Daily Herald. Kalani, what's the next phase for this coaching staff and this team as you finish up this accelerated recruiting process? Well, recruiting will continue. We'll recruit every day. That's never going to stop. Um, but now we have some time to work with and a bunch of, uh, you know, a lot more uh, guys to evaluate. But um, we we got to get things established for why we're here, and that's establishing that identity and, and foundation on the offensive side, special teams and defense, and get ready for spring ball. Which would take place in um, you know beginning of March, and so we're we're looking forward to getting that done and and working with our. I mean we haven't been they had we've had some time but we haven't had um, every day being with our guys and you know like I said we're, they got to know our our coaches as far as recruit our recruits did, but our players are going to love these guys and and the interaction that we've had with our players already has been awesome, and so uh, just having them around more and then getting them adjusted to their position coaches. And to the support staff, it's going to be awesome. It's going to be fun. So getting that all established and getting ready for spring ball is the focus now. Coach Sataki, uh, a lot of people have wondered if BYU is giving you all the resources you need. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you don't have a blank check, but uh, there's been talk that they have stepped up in, um, in money for salaries and support systems. Another thing, maybe even recruiting in this last blitz, sending people over has cost a little bit. Could you address that? Uh, about the administration and Tom Almo and maybe what they have done if they have done something. Mm -hmm. Well, I I can pass that question on to Tom Homo and he can answer it for you. But I can tell you that that um, the administration has has given us everything that we need. 
and the support that we're getting from um, from our fans and from a lot of important people in, 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 in the community and in the BYU, uh, you know, BYU community has been really huge for us. So uh, we, we have the, the things that we need to, you know, to work and recruit that with, with the coaching staff, obviously, that we've hired. And so that, that's a huge credit to our administration, Tom Homo especially. He's done a great job. He's, he's the best athletic director in the country. Kalani, uh, one thing that Bronco Mendenhall did uh, is send some coaches off to the island, Samoa, Tonga, um, to do some recruiting. It seemed like every other two years. And with you guys having uh, a lot of Polynesian connections, is that something that you think will, will continue? We're going to search the whole world, to be honest with you. So calling out all LDS faithful. If you see a big guy that can move pretty good, then call us and get a hold of us. You know, I don't care what sport they're playing. And if they can kick a ball through, you know, through the uprights, I don't care what it is. Well, if you're an athlete and you're a good person and you want to be in this football family, then we want you. And so the, the scope of, of recruiting is going to cover the whole world. And so, yeah, that answers that question. I don't, I don't know if we're going to be able to send every coach to, uh, you know, to different parts of the earth, but I'm willing to do that as a coaching staff, and we have the resources to make it happen. I want to volunteer myself to go. <laughs> you can go to Antarctica. We'll get you there. There's some, some good kickers out there. All right, guys, thank you. <laughs>